Now we're going to check for RPM input. So we're going to this one here now. So I've disconnected the relay I've got for my injectors, so they're isolated. I've also disconnected the relay that runs my coil, so it's disconnected, so the car isn't going to fire. I'm just going to crank it over with the um, with a high-speed logger on to check the RPM input, so the crank angle sensor. Diagnostic and high-speed loggers. Composite logger. Start so it's logging. Now I'm going to use my remote start and crank it over and see what we get. No, nothing. Right, so I moved the expansion board off the top so I can get to R52 and R56. Let's try and get some crank signal. Start the composite logger. Now we're going to turn R56 clockwise a little bit, which is this bottom pot here. And we crank. Okay, so I've adjusted R56. It's about seven turns clockwise. And now if I crank it. It'll give us a trigger pattern there. So they seem to be showing up. Tooth logger. Let's see what happens now. So they're all similar lengths, so that looks fairly good. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now it says we can check for RPM gauge cluster. See if we have anything reading. We do, so it's saying the RPM synced. Okay, so that's good. Check sensors during cranking. So I'm going to put this on map. We should see that change. And that's about it. Okay, yep. Alright, now we're going to do a little data log. That's the next step. So I'll do a sample data log during cranking. So I'm going to go data logging, start logging. for a while. 
it's not too long. Map. TPS. So we can see there that with the data log, the TPS signal varies 0.3%. So that could be because of the pull-up resistor on there, so I'm not sure if that is going to matter. It says in the book it, it shouldn't change. Uh, but I'm going to leave that for now and see if it's going to affect anything. I don't know if that will. Uh, that's how they say to wire it up, but we might have to use another 5-volt uh, source for the pull-up. Anyway, so I'm going to leave that data log now. Come back to here. And what we're going to do now is check the base timing. So what we need to do is to uh, set the cranking advance to zero. So we're going to go ignition settings, mill decoder. Front. All right, so as you can see there, we've got our timing marks, and we're going to aim for zero. We need to adjust the trigger offset enough to get it back to zero during cranking. So I've got my timing light connected, got the mega square connected, so I need to power on now. Okay, so we've got the cranking timing set to zero. I'm going to crank it while I hold the light and see what sort of timing we have. So I'm going to add 10 degrees to the offset figure in Tuna Studio. So I'm going to change it to 88 degrees. The good news about this is that we do have spark and consistent ignition timing. Well, it looks good anyway. <laughs> okay, so here we go again. That's at 88 degrees offset. a little bit, so I'm going to change it to 86. I'll try that. There we go again. So this is at 86 degrees offset in Tuna Studio. <laughs> So that's the offset configured. Now we get to the exciting part.